Stuart, yeah. what image do you have of samurai? Well, since I was a schoolboy, I've been fond of Kurosawa films, so I've always had the image of them being cool, highly principled and heroic. Rather along the line of European knights in the age of chivalry. I see. I've always liked samurai movies and TV dramas too. Uh -huh. Men in armor on the battlefield, evading swords that come from all directions and cutting down their enemies. They're the samurai, archetypal Japanese warriors. It's not unusual for Japanese to be described as samurai. But how did the people of Japan in general come to be associated with samurai warriors? Let's try to unravel this mystery by taking a look at Japanese history. The word samurai is derived from the word saburao, which means to serve. It's believed that the forerunners of the samurai were men who served the nobility as guards, roughly 1,000 years ago. At the end of the 12th century, Minamoto no Yoritomo established the Kamakura Shogunate, and the reign of the samurai began. During the age of civil war in the 16th century, samurai warriors fought and died in battles for land expansion and power. A series of superstar warlords emerged. It was an era when military strength was the key to gaining political power. The beginning of the 17th century opened a stunning new chapter in the history of the samurai. The Edo shogunate was established in what is now Tokyo, and thereafter around 250 years of peace would reign throughout Japan. Fighters by trade, the samurai had no choice but to embark on a completely different way of life. During the Edo period, the shogunate promoted the teachings of Chu Shi Confucianism, a school of Chinese philosophy. And the samurai incorporated these ideas into everyday life. A strong spiritual backbone became the hallmark of samurai values. Be loyal to your master. Observe proper etiquette. Do what's right without hesitation. Show compassion for the weak. The advent of the Meiji era in the late 19th century brought an end to the age of the samurai, but their spirit remained the basis of Japanese moral values. Educator Inazo Nitobe, in his book Bushido, The Soul of Japan, described the spirit of the samurai, or bushi, in detail. To quote just one sentence, Unformulated, Bushido was and still is the animating spirit, the motor force of our country. Even in contemporary Japan, people with high aspirations who adhere unwaveringly to their principles are sometimes referred to as samurai. In that sense, the samurai values continue to be the soul of Japan. Yes. Do you have any comments? Well, Bushido is a great book. I read it when I got interested in Japanese culture long ago, and it's written in a nice lyrical style of English. Yes, I think it remains popular today because it gives a lot of useful insights into the Japanese mentality. Yes. Stuart, yes. it seems to me that many foreigners are familiar with the concept of samurai. Yes, although they are usually referred to as samurai. Um, they're one of the iconic images that foreigners have of traditional Japan, along with ninja and geisha. Mm -hmm. Of course, many images of the Japanese are derived from historical movies, animations, manga and novels. I see. By the way, uh, foreigners often wonder why samurai carried two swords, which seems a very cumbersome kind of thing for a warrior to do. Mm, I'm often asked that question. Mm. Uh, during the Edo period, 
The shogunate allowed samurai to carry both a long sword and short one mm. as their special privilege. Mm. So it was the two swords that distinguished the samurai from commoners. I see. But uh, is it true that they rarely used swords in actual combat? Ah, yes. Mm. Uh, the weapons of choice were spears, mm -hmm. bows and arrows and guns yeah. rather than swords. Mm -hmm. uh, during the Edo period, however, there were few set battles, mm. so swords uh, came to function more as uh, symbolic accessories than as weapons. I see. Uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, there is some similarity between the image of a samurai and that of medieval knights. Yes, knights also formed a, a similar kind of warrior class and were very devoted to their masters. Mm -hmm. mm. And it's often said that uh, Bushido and chivalry have some similarities. Yes, uh, chivalry also included a, a code of behaviour in time of both peace and conflict. And I think the key ideas of loyalty, courage and honesty are similar to those of Bushido. Mm -hmm. Of course, protecting the weak and treating ladies well was part of chivalry too. Rather like the expression, the gentlemanly thing to do. Ah, that sounds very British. <laughs> uh, presumably, the ladies' first concept reflects their code of behaviour? Yes, and it's really a lot to do with providing protection. So, for example, going upstairs, it's ladies first, but coming down, it's gentlemen first, so that the gentleman can catch the lady if she falls. Uh -huh. mm. Aha, that's a good idea. Yes, as long as the man doesn't fall down himself. <laughs> that's a slight problem.